Monica Crowley, everyone. Here she is. Hi, Bill. So uh, Trump uh, on CNN and MSNBC and the Washington Post, New York Times are going to say Trump lost, right? Yes, that's they're how they're going to cast it that. because he's not getting the 5.7 billion. Not getting billion, to get the billion that he wanted. Uh, how do you see it? I see it as a draw. I think a lot of voters who put him in office, and that's Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, look at the first two years of his presidency and say, you control the White House and both houses of Congress with pretty big majorities, and he didn't do anything to get the wall done in that period of time, and now everybody with their hair on fire at the last moment. So just, that's, just, the, that's Why do you think he didn't get it done when he had the uh, Congress on it, his side? It is, it is an open question. I don't really know why. I think because the Republicans didn't have a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate, and the Democrats were stonewalling in, in that chamber, and so he felt like he couldn't really advance it. You know, but I now, blame the, Demo the Republican Party for I that. I do, too. You are absolutely right. Because, because on this issue, yes, not only is the, the president is basically standing alone on this issue. He's not only fighting the far left and the Democrats and the media, he's also fighting the Republican establishment. The reason we're in this big mess is because for decades there has been an unholy alliance between Republicans who wanted the cheap labor and the Democrats who wanted to flood the zone of the country to get a permanent Democrat voting majority. Which they You've have been in California. About this. Right. Work. And they're moving on Arizona. They're moving on New Mexico. They're moving on Texas. That's why Beto O'Rourke came within, what, three points of Ted Cruz. They're trying to tip the scales by flooding the zone. So we've had this mess in place now for decades. And now the president is standing up basically by himself saying, we got to put the brakes on this before we lose the country. Um, if you were President Trump, would you sign this uh, compromise bill? Yes. You and would. here's why. It is a totally crappy deal, okay? It is a loser in every direction. However, politically, I would sign it if I were the president or advising him to do so. And then he'll be able to say, look, we're at least continuing the progress we're making on the wall. We have X number of dollars, 1.4 billion. He will be able to use executive power to reallocate federal funds from elsewhere, direct it to the wall. He'll have construction underway going into 2020. And here's something else he can do, very potent political argument he can make. With every tragedy between now and Election Day 2020 that involves an illegal immigrant, like Kate Steinle and the rest, he'll be able to point to that and say, see, the Democrats have stopped me from trying to prevent exactly But the Democrats this. have a reply that says, uh, according to uh, crime statistics, illegal aliens and uh, legal immigrants commit crimes at a lower rate than Americans. So that, I don't know if you persuade anybody with that. Um, it is an emotional appeal. It is emotional. It, because all you need is one, like, like you led the charge on the Kate Steinle murder, all you need is one horrific crime like that. And, and God forbid that this is to happen. But politically speaking, it is a potent emotional weapon to use with You think for the independents voters. that are going to decide the election that it is? Yes, okay. because it wasn't Republicans who elected Donald Trump. It was disaffected Democrats and independents who support the border wall and support his positions on immigration. After the State of the Union speech last week, CBS, CNN, they all did these polls and they were horrified to report the results. But what we found was between 70 and 80% of the American people agree with the president's immigration policies as he's presented them. In the State of the Union. Um, all right, um, I think that it's gonna take a lot of skill um, for the Trump administration, Republican Party to market this deal as a winner. I agree. Because you're going to have the Ann Coulters, the sellout, you know, the real far right saying he's a wimp and he shouldn't do this, he should blow everything up to get the wall in total built. I don't know how large that segment is. Do you have any idea? It, it, the base on this issue is passionate about it, and I'm part of that base on this issue. So I'm arguing a political argument instead. Of course I want to see the wall. Of course I support the president on it. But politically speaking, you cannot have another government shutdown. So he's got to sign this thing to avert another shutdown. Okay, but my question is how much damage is he doing to the people who support him who are in the Ann Coulter camp? I think there is going to be some damage sustained, but I think he can overcome it if he does the executive action yeah. on reallocating the funds okay, and getting the wall going. But I don't know if he's going to do that right going. away. Um, he's going to take the money he's got, build a, the Rio Grande Valley uh, barrier. Um, I don't know if he is or not. 
Okay. So you say it's a, it's a draw to wash. Yeah. And, and, and now everybody go on. Probably right because the economy is really the big um, thing. Now, I say that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee uh, for the uh, Democratic Party, even though he's not in yet because the Twitter mob will get him as soon as he gets in. Twitter mob doesn't want Joe Biden. They want the far left. They want to crank it up for Kamala Harris or somebody like that. But the Democratic establishment, the money writers, not the Twitter mob who have no money, the people who write the checks, they know the far left can't beat Trump. It's the progressive left can't. While the media sympathizes and puts them in positions where they can be lionized, like Miss Cortez, Americans aren't going to vote for somebody that extreme. So I say Biden. You say. The Democrats are divided. This is true. They've got the revolutionary left led by AOC and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. That's where all the energy and activism is. And then there's the establishment Democrats. So the tension now in choosing a Democratic presidential nominee is going to be between ideological purity and who can beat Trump. And they're going to try to find a candidate who brings both of those but things there isn't together. Anybody. Joe Biden, I agree with you. He's pulling way ahead, so he is yeah, the front runner now. Right. Um, I think you're right. I think he is waiting to see. He he would like a draft Biden movement. Yes, that's what. And he wants. there may be some other draft movements. Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton. We don't know how it's going to shake out yet. But what I will say is this, while Joe Biden is the most substantial of the candidates that, that are in the mix right now, he's an elder statesman, he knows how government works, and he can appeal to the Democrats in the industrial rust belt that helped to elect Donald Trump. He can peel some of those voters away and bring them back to the Democrats. But there's one huge thing that's standing in his way, and that is the youth quake going on in the Democratic yeah, Party. It's the Twitter mob. There, there are stories out today all over the internet in major publications saying the Democratic Party is afraid that Biden might even be weaker than Hillary because the energy and the activism is with They'll the go after folks. him. They'll try to kill him. There's no doubt about it. These people are beyond vicious. Last question. Would you be surprised if Michelle Obama uh, gets in? No, and frankly, Bill, she's the only one who really scares me. I think Trump, with one backhand, can eliminate this entire field of Democrats. You saw him yesterday in El Paso. Nobody does it better than Donald Trump. And with a strong economy, stronger military, stronger U.S. position, he's got an extraordinary record to run on now. The only one who really scares me is Michelle. She was at the Grammys the other night with all the big Grammys. celebrities, J-Lo and the rest. Yeah. Um, she had the number one book in the country by far, Still. right? Yes, it's done extremely well. She has charisma. She gives a great speech. She's smart. She's an attractive person. She's got him. She's got Barack and the entire Obama machinery, which is plug, plug and play. They're ready to go. She, I think, is the only one on the scene so far that could really give Donald Trump a run yeah. for his money. No, it'll be interesting to see if she I'm not sure up. she's going to run. I doubt she will. I think she likes her life. She's making a lot of money now. You know, good socialists no, like no, to make they, a lot of money. They put a lot of pressure on her. You have to save the country, that kind of thing. Uh, I said from the very beginning that she is uh, the one that they may turn to after the... Can you imagine what the chaos is going to be with all these people trying to outgreen the other? Yes. And, you know, it's like, oh, jeez. And there's one other big thing. There's another big draw. Donald Trump was largely largely elected to reverse much of what Barack Obama did, right? She can come back on the scene and say, I'm here to restore it. This will be an yeah, Obama now restoration. I'm again, right. Um, all right. Monica Crowley, everyone.